LIB presents Defend Me, Attorney by Josh Gonzalez. Copyright 2020 by Life is Beautiful Printing Corporation. Distributed by Precious Pages. Narrated by Elijah Maglaya and John Carlo Canales. Chapter 1. Where it all started. Jacksville City, West Berlin. Nasa kanto ako. After I received that message at this hour, when most people were already asleep, I immediately got my jacket on top of my study table, and trying my best not to make any noise, I sneaked out. Dad would really kill me if he found out. I grinned. As soon as I closed the gate, I replied, on my way. Instantly, the cold wind touched my skin. I shivered as I put my hands inside the pockets of my jacket, seeking for some familiar warmth. Within few steps, I saw a familiar figure standing in the corner of the street. From there, I noticed that the orange light coming from the nearby light post was the only light guiding him away through the night's total darkness. As I scanned him, I noticed that he was wearing the weary and overly used black jacket he had been using since high school. He waved his hand as soon as he saw me. I smiled. What's with the wee hours text? I asked, smiling. Trey smiled back. I just want to see you. Why? Can't I? Beat. There was something wrong with his smile. Instead of a signature cheerful and bright smile, it was a bitter and weak one. He looked so exhausted. Seemed like he aged a lot, when in fact, he was just 19. You speak as if I'm your girlfriend, when I'm not. I jokingly said, trying to brighten up the atmosphere. My problema ba? Do I seem problematic? He asked, acting like he was offended. You always are. I joked. We ended up laughing. How's cool? He asked, soon as we went back to our senses. I grinned. Well, just so you know, Girls from different departments are asking where you are and when you are coming back. Even Lady Snorlax, she misses you. We laughed again, making fun of our professor who openly showed her lust for him. So, kailan ka nga ba papasok ulit? Tanong po. Trey shrugged. I doubt that. Siguro, magstop mo na ako. My eyes widened. Between the two of us, siya yung ganadong palaging mag-aral. Why? I asked. Worry could be seen on my face. M may problema ba? He smiled bitterly as he met my eyes. It's dad. I felt my heart take a sudden leap. His dad had always been his problem since we were children. Trace was, and up to now, being beaten up for no reason at all. His family was once a wealthy one in our city, not until his alcoholic and gambler dad ruined things for them. His mom had no choice but to accept random cleaning jobs for years until my dad personally hired her to do our laundries. And that was when we became friends. We often played, colored our books, and reenacted famous scenes from the TV series we both loved to watch. I had witnessed how his mom would ask my dad for advance payments for them to at least have a meal for the day. Not only that, but I witnessed also how his dad would beat him up with his dad's bare hands and with a broom, hangers, and even with a belt, I had seen his scars and bruises. I was a witness to how traumatic his childhood was. Nevertheless, 
Trace turned out to be a tall and smart man as we grew up. My dad sponsored his tuition fees and school expenses in exchange of him tutoring me for free. I was a bit dense, you see. He was the salutatorian both in elementary and high school, but I knew he was easily capable of being the valedictorian. Well, only if his dad was supportive enough. In college, he took BS Biology as his pre-med course, while I took Political Science as my pre-law. He was a consistent dean's lister, and his popularity in school, because of his intellect and face, was insane. It was fine at first, until he got lost again. His father was no longer assaulting him physically, but now, mentally. His mom became his dad's recent punching bag. I told him we should report it to the authorities, but his mom didn't want to. Depressed, I witnessed how he lost interest in his studies. And left with no options, he was forced to take countless part-time jobs just to earn money so his mom wouldn't be beaten up anymore. I gulped. Well, what's with your dad? I asked with anger rising within me. Your mom got beaten up again? Trey smiled weakly, and he looked down. He didn't. This day, he didn't. Astounded, I looked at him. Wow, Trace! Bago yan, ha? He smiled shyly. Courtney, isn't it a piece of good news? It's the start. Mom won't get slaps and bruises anymore. Confused, I forced a smile. Dapat lang, no? Ako ang bububog sa tatay mo, eh. He laughed. Now you sound like a mad girlfriend. Do you want me to? I jokingly said. I'd love to. Flabbergasted, I looked at him. No, he was not joking this time. Trace looked down and let out a sigh. But I can't, and I should not. I opened my mouth, but nothing came out. I know you like me. He said. He was smiling when he met my eyes. My body might have been numb from all the beatings I got from my dad, but my heart isn't. Since when? I asked. My eyes were alarmed. Since when did you know? He shrugged. I don't know. I just felt like you liked me. How? I asked with determined eyes. He looked at me, and it was clear that he was figuring out if there was still a way out. Tell me, Trace, I said eagerly. How did you know? When he realized I wouldn't stop unless he'd give me the explanation I wanted, his face started to soften. He stared at my eyes intently, and suddenly, his lips curved into a small smile. When you started giving me the look I gave you when I first laid my eyes on you. My jaw literally dropped. My heart just skipped a beat, and I felt the entire zoo inside me. How should I respond to that when he was looking deeply into my eyes and with a smile on his lips? His smile widened. I like you too. I bit my lower lip. Matagal ko nang pinangarap na marinig yun kay Trace. Pero ngayong narinig ko na, bakit parang gusto ko tumakbo? I could even feel my cheeks burning red. However, before I could answer his unexpected confession, he smiled weakly. But I should not. He added, I must stop. Why not? I asked. A mixture of love, pain, and fear could be seen in my eyes. You know I like you, and you want me too. So why not? 
Why make things complicated for us when everything is mutual? It's not that easy. He said. His eyes started to be emotional. I'm too messed up. So what? I asked. You know I like messy things. You... you don't understand. He argued. Then make me understand. I eagerly replied. It won't make sense. He responded. Then make it in a way that it'll make sense. Trace looked at my face again, and he was probably looking for an escape. He was certain that I wouldn't let this go until he'd give me a valid reason. He heaved a sigh. Sobrang gulo ng buhay ko. He started. My family, my dad, even me, myself. My mind was exploited even at a very young age. I got all forms of beatings from dad that made me numb to it. I also saw how complicated life was for my mom, working her ass off 24-7. I saw how my dad abused her. Time wouldn't pass that she wouldn't be getting a bruise or a slap. It caught me off guard. I never knew that the reason could be this deep. See, Courtney, kahit na gustong gusto kong subukan, I'm, I'm too complicated for you. I want the best for you, but I will never be the best. I'm just one of those filths that might ruin you. With the dirt in my hands, I don't want to ruin you. You're too precious for that. Then I'll fix you. I said, if you want, I'll hold your hand while you fix yourself. I can always wait, Trace. You know that. I said, and my voice broke. I felt tears building up in my eyes, desperate as it may seem, but I don't care anymore. You have no idea what you're saying. No one can save me. Trace said, and he looked directly at my eyes. Not even you. That created a bang in my chest that I couldn't handle. That's actually why I went here. He said, and tears were visibly forming in his eyes too. I'm saying goodbye. My eyes widened. What do you mean? He gave me a weak smile. I know I've said goodbye far too many times, but this time, it's real. Just then, his tears fell. Farewell, the best thing I never had. He said while looking at me. My tears fell on my cheeks. Till we meet again. In no time, he turned his back on me. I watched him as he walked away. It pierced my heart. In this melancholic moment, he came to me like a thief in the night, carrying my own heart with him as we parted ways. I started to cry so hard that my sight got blurry due to my tears. With my chest feeling immense pain, I turned around. I couldn't watch him slowly fading in the dark. I just couldn't. I started to walk, but just when I was about to reach our gate, I heard noises, really loud noises, as if it was an emergency or something. Bewildered, I looked back again, and that was when I saw my roots about to disown me. There were cars, plenty of them, all police cars, and then I saw cops coming out of those cars. In my horror, they gathered around Trace and pointed their gun at him. Put your hands up in the air! One police said. You are under arrest! I shuddered. What the hell was this? As fast as I could, I ran towards them, but I was too late. 
he was arrested and was pushed against the car as they tried to handcuff him with his hands on his back. You have the right to remain silent. The police said. Anything you say can be used against you to court. You have the right to have a lawyer present during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided to you if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Do you understand? I was stupefied. The next thing I knew, he was being forced inside the car. Just then, our eyes met. Trey stopped. He smiled weakly, and he mouthed, I love you. That broke me. When the police car closed, things became clear to me as if I just got splashed by cold water. I tried to come near him while I was hysterical but the police did not allow me until the car departed and I was left standing still while crying. Kakilala mo ba yun? A policeman, who was also watching the car depart, asked me, Grabing bata? Nakatakot? I looked at him, confused. But, bakit po? What he said, left me dumbstruck. Pinatay niya ang sarili niyang ama. Chapter 2 Defend me, attorney. Crowded people. Complete nuisance. The noise I was not comfortable with was coming from every corner. It had been weeks. Yet things didn't go well. Weeks, yet things had become much worse than they already were. I sighed. Dito raw nakakulong yung binatang pumatay sa sarili niyang ama? I heard a woman in her 40s talking to the man in front of her. Totoo ba? Aba, oo. A man who was wearing a shirt with the word detainee on it said, Napakagandang lalaki. Hindi mo may isip na magagawa niya yun. Napakatahimik pa. Pero kung magsalita naman, halata mong matalino. Sayang nga eh. I closed my eyes. Feeling chest pain crawling inside me. I was inside a detention center and visiting Trace and hoping he would show up because he never showed up to any visit. Not even once. Not even if it was me. Weeks had passed by, but things just became more tragic. It turned out, Trace killed his dad. He really did it. He admitted it. As soon as the tragedy happened, he went straight to see me before surrendering himself, which didn't happen because he was caught before he could do it. His relatives condemned him. Even our neighbors did. His mom got traumatized. She was sent to a nearby hospital by his aunt. She wouldn't talk. She would just sometimes cry, saying she saw blood and that someone killed someone. Then she'd scream. To make things worse than worst, his case was being used by some powerful politicians. The case was a national issue, a very controversial one. Him murdering his dad, and the emotional breakdown of his mom. Everyone was mad, enraged, and wanted to kill him. People were protesting outside the Supreme Court building, saying now was the perfect time to revive the death penalty and let him be the first to have a taste of it. They said people like Trace, who were monsters who feared no one, should all be eliminated from the society by capital punishment. The public was mad to the point that even my schoolmates and professors, who once looked up to him, now hated him. Because of this, politicians started to use him as a platform for their political agenda, since the elections were just around the corner. Free publicity for them, I must say. 
many people from the Senate and the House of Representatives, in fact, were already discussing the death penalty bill. The last I heard, it was at the second reading already. The public wanted it, and if they wanted a guaranteed seat in the government, they'd do what it'd take to make it into law, and Trace might be the first victim of it. My mind, confused and in a daze, suddenly became clear when Trace showed up. He was wearing a black shirt and shorts. He sat in front of me. No emotion could be seen on his face. You're not wearing a detainee's uniform like them? I awkwardly said, trying to flash a smile. I'm remanded in custody. He coldly replied as his cold eyes met mine. Remanded in custody meant, meant they were detained, but still had their rights with them, and they were not considered as a detainee yet. So they had the right to wear what they wanted until they were proven guilty. Mabuti naman at pakita ka na sa akin. I said, trying to smile. You've been avoiding visits for weeks. Because there's no need for a visit. Trey said, colder than he had ever been. But I'm not just anyone. I said, I'm, I'm your, your, he twisted a smile. Everything between us had ended that night, Courtney. Then he looked into my eyes. Forget me. I won't, I firmly said, trying to get a hold of myself. Look. He said making a face I never saw before. He seemed different, as if he was not the person I grew up with. I'm a murderer. I killed my dad. Aren't you scared of me, Courtney? Aren't you afraid that I might kill you too? Trace, I'm not, I said, looking in his eyes still. Because I know you are not capable of that. He laughed, mockingly. Not capable? And his face turned serious. I just did. My mouth opened up to say something, but none came out. Trace narrowed the gap between our faces and stared into my eyes. If you think I'm still the same best friend you once had, you're wrong. So stop acting like you know me because you don't. I only let you see a part of me that will be convenient for you to see. We have our own dirty little secrets, Courtney. And what? You'll save me? You can't save someone who has no intention of being saved at all. The public is right. I'm a monster. His cold eyes looked at me sharply. So do me a favor. Don't come here again. I don't want to see you. He stood up and started to walk away. I was left with nothing but pain. Just then, he stopped and he looked back. The lawyer you sent me? I turned him down. The public defender will do. After all, no trials will happen. Well, why? I asked, shocked. What do you mean? Trey smiled weakly. I'll plead guilty. It had been hours since he said he'd plead guilty, but my mind still couldn't absorb it. His preliminary trial would start two days from now, at mababaliw na ako sa kaiisip kung paano ako makakagawa ng paraan para tulungan siya. Preliminary trial happens before the actual trial. Ito yung part wherein the defendant would either plead guilty or not guilty. If na guilty ang suspect, it means ina-admit niya ang krimen, kaya walang trial na mangyayari. Doon na siya mismo sisintensyahan ng mas magaan na verdict. However, if they'd plead not guilty, 
the judge would contemplate if there was a probable cost to continue the case. If wala, idi dismiss ang kaso. Pero kung meron, there'd be a trial. There's nothing we can do then. My professor said. He keeps on admitting the crime. He'll for sure make a guilty plea. I sighed. <sighs> eh, paano kung mali yung verdict? My professor laughed. How can it be wrong when a suspect keeps on admitting? Saka, bakit pa pinipilit mong inosente si Trace? Kahit may confession na at napakaraming ebidensya na nagtuturo na he committed the crime. I shrugged. Bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba hindi pa rin ako naniniwala kahit na napakaraming ebidensya? Frustratedly, I went to my next class. Oops! Nandiyan na yung partner in crime ng criminal! A woman said. The class laughed. Ano sabi mo? I immediately asked back. Diba? We were seen together when he got caught. She asked sarcastically while the whole class looked amused. Did you plan the murder together or what? Wow! What a great kink you got there, huh, Miss Spencer? I smiled. What if we did? And I'm planning to murder you now. She smiled as well. Careful with your words, miss. We're studying law. I might get you kicked out due to death threat. I'm damning witness, so. I smirked. In case I'll be kicked out, okay lang. At least pera ng tatay ko ang pinambabayad ko. Eh, ikaw, saan magaling ang tuition mo? Sa ka ba ng bayan na ninanakaw ng tatay mo sa Senado? She got dumbstruck. What? The crowd was now fully amused. Mapang asar ko siyang nginitian. How's your dad's graft case, bitch? She reddened with anger. What Take those rubbish. words back! I smirked. I won't. I can play the dirtiest shit, so don't mess the with me. The preliminary hearing will start any minute now. As soon as I turn now. my back, I heard her say something. Too bad, she said, smiling. My dad will sit as one of the jurors in your friend's case. I'll make sure he'll be convicted. With anger overflowing from me, in the blink of an eye, she felt a flying fist on her face. I was suspended for days, but Dad managed to make things well. Until the day of the preliminary hearing came, and I found out that the public defender was my dad's scholar and my senior in school. To my horror, the death penalty was about to be approved by the Senate. I locked the door. What's with this rubbish? The public defender asked after I locked him up together with me in the restroom. The preliminary hearing will start any minute now. Panting, I calmed myself. <laughs> I came here with Dad's request. Will your client plead guilty or not? Confused, he looked at me. He says guilty. My dad says you'll say not guilty. What? He exclaimed. Uh, but, but, he, he says he's... You know he's dad's scholar as well, right? Dad believes he's innocent. That's why he's asking you not to plead guilty and will help you in the trial. It's your first time in the field. Gusto mong maging marumi agad ang record mo? First case, talo? It had been a long argument when he finally said he would. To my surprise, he did say the suspect pleaded not guilty, that even him, Trace, got shocked. After the trial, they came out and our eyes met. It's your doing, isn't it? Trace asked. I told you not to meddle with my case. It's dad, okay? I lied. He scoffed. <laughs> Your dad visited me last night and said my case is hopeless. Whom are you lying to? Then the police accompanied him away. I saw the defender talking with someone over the phone. 
and I knew it was my dad. Dad almost killed me. The defender almost killed himself too. I created a mess, I admit, and I didn't know how to solve it. The defender was scared as dad shouted at him madly for believing me and I personally got suspended. I promised to help him at all costs. You did the most awful of all awful things. My dad said after he calmed down. I'm disappointed in you. I looked down. I'm sorry, Dad. You didn't help him. You just set his foot in his own grave. I looked at him. I looked at him. But, but? The death penalty. The Senate approved it already, and do you know where it is now? It's being transmitted to the President. And knowing the current public clamor, he'll sign it. There's no reason to veto it. One sign, and he'll fall under it. I felt a loud bang in my chest. Once the bill got signed, and Trace got proven guilty, he'd be executed. He'd be killed instead of just imprisonment. He may be executed publicly, in broad daylight, because of you. Your friend's death will all be your fault. He exclaimed angrily again and went upstairs. The thought of making things worse than they already were didn't put me to sleep. What if I really pushed Trace to his death? What if it's all my fault? What if the defender won't win the case? What will happen to him? Would he be injected with lethal chemicals, beheaded in public, or would he be the first victim of the electric chair? I just want help. I just want to make his name clear. The next morning, I visited Trace again. This time, I didn't have the confidence to meet his eyes. Himala. He said, sitting in front of me. Where did your confidence go? Did it run away when it realized the mess you did? Beat. Are you even aware that I may be slapped with the death penalty because of what you did? I looked down. S sorry. Would that be your answer once you see me inside a coffin one fine day? I burst into tears. <laughs> sorry. Bakit ka umiyak? Nakala ko ba paninindigan mo? I bit my lower lip, crying still. <laughs> sorry. Gusto ko lang, gusto ko lang makatulong. Kasi, kasi ayoko makulong ka. Kasi, kasi hindi ako naniniwala. Ganun ka. Ginawa ko lang yun. Kasi concerned ako. Kasi, mahal kita. There was a long pause. You love me still? Kahit nakita mo na how monstrous I can be? Trace later asked, breaking the ice. I killed my dad. Can't you see it? Halimaw ako, Courtney. Demonyo. No one wants to be a monster, Trace. I said. No one dreams to be a demon unless being once the only choice they have. He smirked. Eddie, naniniwala kang I did it. I cried. Finally. Hindi ko alam. Everything keeps on telling me you did. The evidence, kahit ikaw nga, sinasabi mo rin. Pero hindi ko ma-absorb. Ewan ko. Ang gulo. Then prove it. He said, looking in my eyes. You started it, you finish it. What do you mean? 
Investigate on your own. Seek your evidence. Help the defender in court. Do everything. I don't care. Seek answers for your questions, and once you've done it, give me a verdict. Am I guilty, or am I not? Still confused, I looked at Trace. I don't understand. What I'm saying is, I'm handing you my life. And he gave me the smile he often made during the days when everything was fine. When things were not as this chaotic. The brightest and sweetest smile that could light up my mood. The smile I fell in love with. And there, I noticed the pain in his eyes. He seemed so weary. So tired of everything. I can plead guilty again, since the trial hasn't started yet. But seeing things now, I guess I won't do that. Why? I asked, confusion in my eyes. Because I'm now having fun. Trey said. Guilty or not, I want you to know the answer. I want you to seek answers on your own. But I'm telling you, I did it. And he looked straight in my eyes. I killed my dad. With eyes that I couldn't tell if lying or saying the truth, he smiled. Defend me, attorney. Chapter 3. The Prosecutor The place was full of happy callers. In fact, alphabets and painted animals could be seen in every corner. Similarly, joyful faces could be seen on everyone's face. Okay, kids, a woman said, wearing a uniform that looked like a teacher's. I want you to draw what you want to be in the future. A policeman, one shouted, even raising his hand. The woman smiled. I said draw, and she looked at the class. After 30 minutes, teacher will check it, huh? You want stars? Oh. The teacher then gave an encouraging smile. Then start now! Everyone started drawing about their dream job. With their coloring materials, everyone seemed to enjoy the activity. Some drew a doctor, a teacher, policeman, chef, flight attendant, engineer, dentist, and others. But among all the usual professions, someone's drawing was different. Ano sayo? A girl with her ponytail asked. The boy looked at her shyly. Hindi ko alam. Ano yan? The teacher then asked, bewildered on the drawing she saw. I don't have a dream, teacher. The boy reasoned out, casually. What the teacher saw were two drawings. The left showed a man beating his family, and the right showed a happy family. The only dream I have, the innocent child said, is to finally see Dad stop beating my mom. I opened my eyes. What was that? Okay ka lang? A voice asked, and I recognized it. It was the public defender assigned to Trace's case. Kaidlip ka na. He added. Hindi na kita ginising. Mukha kang pagod. There, I noticed where I was. I was inside a room in the detention center designated for trial queries. It had been days since he asked me to defend him, and days since I probably had lost my sanity. I kept on reading related cases and interviewing authorities to get a grasp of the case. In fact, tomorrow would be the start of his trial. I wiped the tears in my eyes. Umiyaka? The defender asked. No, I calmly said. Sa panaginip siguro, sir? He understandingly nodded. 
Don't call me sir, he said. Our age gap isn't that much. Just call me Newt. That's my name. I smiled back. Sure, Newt. I looked at my best friend, Trace, who was sleeping on the opposite side of the table. He was facing me. As I looked at him, he still had the face of a man who carried the world on his shoulder. He had the face of a child who got abused and exploited at a very young age. I could still remember how his body got daily bruises. I could remember how his dad let him starve. I could remember how he would usually be beaten up, even with the presence of his friends. I could remember how he endured every single thing. Nevertheless, he grew up as a really good man. You, do you think he did it? I asked the defender, looking at Trace still. At first, I thought so. Then he looked at him too. But now, I'm confused. I smiled. I know. He was the most genuine mouth and realistic eyes, and that's the problem. His mouth says he did, but I can see in his eyes that he didn't. It's confusing. I don't know anymore. I bought us drinks. You said. Do you drink beer? Beer? I asked. Canned? He nodded. I smiled. I looked back at Trace and I got to reminisce something that happened years ago when I first tasted a beer. Growing up, I became really fond of him. In fact, I didn't have any friends aside from him. We were always together and grew up with each other. I was very comfortable when I was with him until one event happened that made me think twice if what I felt about him had exceeded the boundary of friendship. We were invited to our seniors' party. While preparing for it, I didn't have any idea what to wear or how I should dress because I was not really that stylish. So an hour before the party, I called Trace to come to our house and help me. So here it is, I said. Smiling, Trace's cold eyes looked at me with disbelief. What am I supposed to do here? Tutulungan mo ko magayos, siempre. Bakit hindi ka nalang mag t-shirt at pantalon? Minsan, kailangan ko rin magbukang babae, ano? Malay mo, may magkagusto sa akin doon eh. Di graduate ka na sa pagsunod-sunod sa akin. We laughed. Ano bang gagawin ko? Tanong ni Trace. Bilisan na lang natin. I smiled. I'll do makeup and I'll wear, for the first time ever, drum rolls, please. Contact lens! I smiled so wide while saying it, hoping to see any emotions on his face. But there was nothing but disgust. You're embarrassing me. He said. Alam mo man lang ba kung paano yan susuotin? Siyempre, hindi. What? He exclaimed. Kaya ka nga nandito, di ba? Tutulungan mo ko. Did you even ask me kung alam kong gawin yung mga yan? I shrugged as I opened the lid where the pair of contact lens was placed. Doesn't matter. Nevertheless, Trace helped me still trying his best not to lose his temper. That hurts! I complained. You want it? He argued. You're doing it wrong! I know what I'm doing. Can you at least be careful? I'm on track, okay? Just open your eyes wide and stop making that awkward moaning sound. I'm not moaning! I'm in pain. After minutes of arguing, we were able to put the contact lens on my eyes. Whoa! I was amazed while looking at myself in the mirror. It's pretty, isn't it? 
Why do you need that, though? I looked at him. Well, just so you know, I started. It's because I'm not as attractive as anyone, not as hot as the girls at my age, not even as tall as them. My hair isn't even straight. My skin isn't that clear. My color isn't that bright. I'm turning 20 next year, but I haven't gotten myself a boyfriend yet. Now look at me, trying my best to look pretty because I never felt it, not even once in my life. No man will ever like me. Satisfied? Rubbish. He murmured. I heard that. I looked at him sharply. What did you say? Did you just invalidate my pain? Look. He said. It's rubbish because I think it is. It's so stupid of you to think that you're not pretty just because your skin is not clear. Your hair is not straight, you're not tall, or you're not as sexy as they are. It's stupid because you are adhering to their standards of defining yourself. So what if you're not like them? That's actually what makes you way prettier. You're not just like them. You are you. My eyes widened and I didn't expect that from him. I even felt my cheeks burning. And can you please stop blabbering about things you are unaware of? You don't see yourself when you are laughing so loud over silly things. You don't see yourself when you're eating your favorite food, listening to your favorite music, dancing to different melodies, or when you're reading your favorite book. You don't see how your eyes spark whenever you talk about the things you love. You don't see how you shine when you're doing the things you are so passionate about. You don't see them, but someone else does. So do you think no one likes you? Stop acting like a child. You may not just be aware of it, but somebody out there is falling in love with every awkward move you do in every second of every minute of every day. My jaw partly dropped. He stood up. Manonood lang ako ng TV sa iba ba? Tawagin mo na lang ako kapag okay na. He then turned his back, but before he went out, Trey said something that made my heart flutter. You're pretty. He said. With or without those. He then walked out. I was left there, standing, feeling my cheeks burning red. I touched my chest as I felt like my heart was about to come out of my chest. What was that? Why do I feel like this? Do I like him? Why do I suddenly see him as a man now? Maybe I do. I closed my eyes as I sat on my bed. No, not maybe. Surely I do. There's no point to deny it now. I like him. I shook my head as a smile curved on my lips, remembering what happened in the past. Stop looking at me. Felt like I got splashed by cold water when his eyes opened. And stop smiling. Shocked, I looked away. I... I'm not looking at you. I lied. Defensively, panicking. You are. You look like you want to... Uh, sorry. <clears throat> you are. You look like you want to kiss me. What? I exclaimed. You should have kissed me. Hindi naman ako tatanggi. I might even kiss back. Trey smiled. Try me. I felt my face turning red, so I changed the topic. About, uh, tomorrow's case. Uh, what's the plan? We just talked about it earlier. Newt said, trying his best not to laugh with the red face I had now. They'll insist it's patricide. A murder. 
but we'll insist it's justifiable homicide. Self-defense. He added. Lies. Trace murmured, but I didn't bother. In order for a self-defense to be a self-defense, it should be pointed out that he was in imminent danger. I said, contemplating. I wasn't, okay? I told you, I killed him. Shut up! I said, looking sharply at him. You told me to investigate, then I will. Whenever they ask you about things, don't answer yet. Invoke your rights against self-incrimination and let your defender do the things. Lumingon ako kay Newt. I think I know how we can make the scenario crucial for him to self-defend. How? Tanong niya. I smiled. Put me in the witness stand. The trial started. As expected, they did insist it was a parricide, and Newt said it was a justifiable homicide, and if we won, Trace will be acquitted of all charges. The opening argument started. They presented evidence, and we also did. He's a really good student, Miss Snorlax in the witness stand. He's a model student and has a really good moral character. He won't do that. Said by an old lady living near us. Napakabait na bata yan. Kahit noon pa. Napakatagal na ng away namin ang amain niya. Kung totoong gusto niyong patayin, noon pa sana niya ginawa. Half day lang po siya noon. Said the manager of a convenience store where Trace worked. Dapat nga, wala siyang pasok noon. Day off niya yun eh. Pero pumasok pa rin siya. After hours of presenting facts and such, I got called. In no time, I saw myself on the witness stand, facing loads of people and the media. I solemnly swore to tell the truth in front of them, that everything I would say was a factual and nothing but just facts. Please state your name for the record, the clerk asked. My name is Courtney Spencer, I said. May I know your relationship with the defendant? Newt finally asked. I'm his friend. Since when? Since I was six, I guess. How did your relationship with the defendant start? It was when my dad hired his mom to do our laundries. Why would his mom do your laundries? For them to have a meal for the day. How so? Don't they have a job? His family used to own a restaurant before. They had a restaurant, so why would his mom do your laundries to have an income? They went bankrupt. Why? His father was an alcoholic and a gambler. Ay, ako to, no? Objection, Your Honor. A tall and attractive prosecutor around his 20s protested. The defense is trying to make a serious allegation that has nothing to do with the case. It will yield something relevant, Your Honor. You fought back. Objection overruled. The judge said. Continue. Newt smiled. Thank you, Your Honor. He then looked at me. What you've said is a serious allegation. If the court asks for evidence, can you support your claim? I can, I confidently said. He gave me an encouraging smile. At this time, I would like to direct your attention to the screen. What can you see in the exhibit? It's... it's familiar, I stuttered. Can you remember it? It's... it's our activity when we were in first grade. I answered, shocked. How did you know it was his? We were seatmates that time. Can you recall what his explanation was? Sure, <clears throat> I said and gulped. 
We were asked to draw our dream job that time. I started. But he said he had no dream, aside from seeing his dad to finally stop beating his mom. It created noise in the court. Objection, Your Honor. The prosecutor protested again. The defense is making up allegations the witness might not be able to support. The witness is under an oath, Your Honor. Newt said. She's a law student herself. She knows what she's saying. Objection overruled. Continue. Newt smirked, looking at the tense prosecutor. You said his dad would often beat his mom. Did I hear that right? He asked me. Yes, I answered. How often? Every day. Again, there was uproar. How about the defendant? Was he beaten up as well? I wandered my eyes, and there I saw a trace. He was silently sitting there, looking at me. Every day, I could barely utter. People were murmuring now. How did you say so? We saw each other every day because he tutored me and he was my dad's scholar. A day wouldn't pass that I wouldn't see bruises in his body. You said your best friends. Was there a time when he told you he wanted to beat his dad back? No, I said. It was me who was always furious. He was calm about it, saying, saying he loved his dad still, nevertheless. Are there instances in your friendship that the defendant has shown any aggressive behavior towards his dad? None, I said. He would always prefer to see himself being beaten up by his dad instead of his mom, and he would always prefer to endure the pain instead of putting his dad in jail. Newt smiled at me. A sense of victory could be seen on his face. He looked at the judge. Your Honor, the defendant had been abused by his dad for a long time. If the defendant has a behavior of a murderer, if the defendant has a behavior of a murderer, he would have exhibited it before, but his records are all clear. He had been enduring the beating of his dad, so if he has a murderer's behavior, he could have killed him a long time ago. That's why the case is not murder, but self-defense. He defended himself and his mom. He looked at the jurors. The defense rests. Would the prosecution like to cross-examine? The judge asked. We will, your honor. It was the prosecutor. My eyes widened. Why did I feel so heavy? The prosecutor smiled soon as he took over the floor. I would like to ask a few things I highlighted. He then looked at me. You said you are best friends, am I right? Yes. For how many years? More than a decade. And you see each other every day? Yes. Same school? Yes. Strong bond? I guess so. Strong enough to cover him up? My eyes grew bigger. Objection, Your Honor! Newt stood up. The prosecution is trying to intimidate the witness. Objection sustained. The judge said. Change the question. The prosecutor bitterly smiled. Then he cleared his throat. At this moment, I would like you to focus your mind on the night of Saturday. The night the defendant was arrested. You said you were always together. Were you with him that time? He... Yes. I stuttered. What did you two do? He went to our house. Did he tell you he killed his dad that time? 
He didn't. He went to you right after killing his dad. You said your friendship is strong. Am I right? He, yes. Strong enough to tolerate his crime? My eyes grew bigger, shocked with a sudden punch of question. Objection, your honor. Objection, your honor. The prosecution is making up allegations. The defender said. Objection sustained. Change the question. The prosecutor flashed a playful smile. What was with this man? He had this power to make someone lunatic by his play of words. At this time, I would like you to focus on the video on the screen. Let's play it. In a flash, he played something on the screen. I felt a bang in my chest. What I saw left me petrified. It was the video of the night we met, caught by a nearby CCTV. At this point in the video, you were stopping him from going. Were you stopping him from surrendering or stopping him from running from his crime? I told you, I'm not aware, I said, my heart banging inside. What did you talk about then? He asked, amused by the fear he saw in my eyes. He killed someone and police were searching around. Of course, he'd tell you something. What was it? I told you, he didn't tell me anything. I said defensively. Was it a secret on how he killed his dad? He asked, adding fuel to my fear and panic. No! How to kill, perhaps? No! Was he asking you to remain silent about the crime he committed? Of course not! How to run away after killing someone, maybe? I said no! Objection! Objection overruled. Let the witness answer. It wasn't about the killings, okay? I said, in tears, frustrated. I... I... I confess my love for him. Bang. Silence. The prosecutor bit his lower lip, looked in my eyes playfully, and flashed a tricky smile, and faced the crowd. That's it, Your Honor. The witness's current state of mind can be rational and objective. She's blinded by love and might twist facts to satisfy her love. I revoke her reliability as a witness. He said and looked in my eyes. He smirked. I move a strike. Chapter 4 The Veil of the Dark I move a strike. My eyes grew bigger. Moving a strike was taking all the things I said that could help my friend out of the records. This I, as a witness, would no longer be available to help him. I'm not done yet. He said, smiling. You concluded that the defendant cannot do harm, and he had no thoughts of killing his dad. Am I right? He, yes. I said, shaking, panicking. Then let's take a look at these photos. What I saw rendered me speechless. It's a comic book made by the defendant. It's about a son who killed his dad. He stabbed him multiple times in the chest. Are you aware of the cause of death of the victim? No. No. He got stabbed in the chest by a knife multiple times. It was a massive hemorrhage. The knife. Okay. <clears throat> in three, two, one. The knife directly hit his organs, similar to the comic book your friend drew. There was again an uproar. The defendant has shown aggressive behavior through arts, Your Honor. He didn't execute it physically, but mentally, he did. He may not be vocal about it, but through arts, he had planned to kill, and when he got triggered, 
he committed the crime, just like in the comic strip he made. Thus, the case is not self-defense, not a justifiable homicide either, but a murder. The prosecutor then smiled. The prosecution rests its case. Just by that, I found my credibility as a witness invalidated. My testimony was now invalid. Great. It had been weeks since that happened. Two more days of trial occurred after that. The second was really chaotic. We were like buried six feet below the ground. They showed evidence we didn't expect, and I'd admit, the defense was almost knocked out. They showed the knife used in the crime and found out there was only one fingerprint on it, and it was Trace's fingerprint. The forensic found a detailed fingerprint that allowed them to identify what hand was used in the crime, a left hand. The second evidence was testimonies, which were all synchronized as if they were scripted, but seemed factual. From that view, the court could decide that the case was guilty. In the third trial, we made it. We were able to defend him. I didn't know how we did, but the case seemed equal now. Tomorrow was the last day of trial, and the decision would be handed if he was guilty or not. Good thing you came. The man in formal attire said, smiling. I thought you wouldn't. I rolled my eyes. What do you want, Prosecutor Tyler Scott? He was the prosecutor in the case. Yes, the one who moved a strike against me. But no, we weren't close. It was just that I found out he was dad's student in college. Have you heard the news? The death penalty got signed. It seemed like my heart suddenly went dead. It means if he's proven guilty tomorrow, he'll be the first to be executed. He said bitterly, and you'll just take it? I asked, anger in my voice. I know you're against the death penalty, so why push someone onto it? He smirked. What do you want me to do? Drop the case? I can't. Do you think he's guilty? I asked. He smiled. At first, I was just curious about the case. That's why I took it. Kind controversial. Along with the process, I don't know. He seemed like he can't do it, but it also seems that he can. Besides, it's my duty to prosecute him. I have to prove he committed the crime. That's what I'm paid for. That's my duty. You'll prosecute Kahit that there's a chance that he's innocent? You know, he said, it's not my duty to prove his innocence. It's his counsel's duty to do so. If he's guilty and I proved it, the law is above all. If he's innocent, yet he's found guilty, that's when power takes over. For him, no one's willing to help. The whole public wants to persecute him. Any politician that would go against it won't receive a vote for next month's elections for sure. They're all after that. Those hypocrites. You know something's wrong with the law, I said. Why turn a blind eye? I'm not. He said, smiling. In fact, I called you to give you something. I was confused as he handed me a flash drive. Tomorrow is the last day of trial. I'll do my job to convict him still. In the trial, there's a part where an evidence might be presented or a witness might be called or recalled. Even you. It's the last part, and it's the game changer. Let's say... Huling alas? It may win or lose your case. You have to do well. What's with this? I asked. Aanhin ko to. Of course you can't use that. You're not a lawyer yet. 
It contains something that might clear your mind. I got that when I was seeking evidence to use and decided to keep it. Now, I'm giving it to you. Seeing that would make you either help him or condemn him. It's up to you. As fast as I could, I went to my car and watched what was in the flash drive through my laptop. I was dumbfounded, bewildered, and dumbstruck. I was lost for words. I drove my car faster than the required speed, and with tears in my eyes, I called Newt. Hey! He said as he answered my call. I found a witness we can use tomorrow. Listen, I said. Set him aside. Put me on the witness stand tomorrow. What? He exclaimed. But you were... Just do it! I said, and with determination in my eyes, I added. I'll be this trial's game changer. Minutes later, I found myself inside a detention query room. I told you not to visit during nighttime. Trace said coldly. But I looked straight into his eyes. I need to ask you some questions. What would that be? He asked, meeting my eyes. Tell me, I said, looking in his eyes. Did you do it? He laughed. <laughs> I told you, I did. I gulped. Remember Zuckerman and his colleagues? The man who proposed the four-factor theory of deception? I nodded. What's with them? Trace asked, confused. They said a person can be fought lying by four factors. I introduced, observing him. First is the arousal. When someone lies, it gives them anxiety and arousal due to the conflicting values so they become nervous. Next is the behavior control. Basically, they just control their body movements and language because sometimes their legs become shaky. Next, the emotion. It's in their eyes. It's on their face. Lastly, the thinking. The consistency of reasoning. By saying so, I saw that his legs stopped shaking. He gulped. I smiled. Did I just catch you? He smirked. <laughs> no. I then opened my bag and put something on the table between us. That's the evidence the prosecution used. A comic book you made. I said, my face emotionless. You didn't plot them, did you? What are you? It's my plot. I halted him. It's my short story. I wrote in my diary that I wanted to be published someday, but through animation. But sadly, I can't draw. So you did draw it for me. I'm a mystery thriller writer. Have you forgotten? All right, sorry. Now be the call. And you got to know in three, two, one, go. And you got to know I like you because it's written on my diary, the same page of my entry about the animation. I saw his eyes suddenly becoming uncomfortable. I met his eyes. You have my diary, right? Trace gulped. You... You left it in... Whoa! I exclaimed, shocked. So, I'm right? Damn, I'm just guessing. I saw the change in his aura. He was getting trapped. In the blink of an eye, I placed a document on the table. Another evidence of the prosecution. Your fingerprint. It clearly says it's mine. He smirked. How can you debunk that? That's the idea. It's yours, but I wonder. It says the hand that stabbed your dad is a left hand. There, I noticed his hands trembling. You're right-handed. I saw his mood change. That's... That's rubbish. I placed another document on the desk. It's your medical records in school, I said. Last year, 
you didn't make it to the badminton tournament because your left hand got injured. You couldn't even hold a pen because it hurt. So how could you stab your dad with that when the record says he was forcefully stabbed? I felt tears forming in my eyes. I went to your mom yesterday, I said. Now tears flowing. Is she fine? Trace asked. His voice sounded longing. She is, I said. But do you know what I've found out? I asked, meeting his eyes, which now had become teary. She, she's wearing gloves. His eyes widened with visible tears forming in them. She has a skin problem in her hand, so she wears it. Your mom and dad, they are both left-handed and you are not. Your mom's fingerprint isn't on the knife because she wears gloves. Am I right? His tears fell. He looked away. You're, you're blabbering nonsense. Finally, I put my phone on the table. Using now the flash drive the prosecutor gave me. I played it. We listened to it. And in no time, a female voice could be heard. Crying. Panicking. With tears flowing from my eyes, I looked at him. He said I shall investigate, right? This is the result. You didn't kill your dad, I said. Because your mom did. Trace looked down, and there was a long silence. You caught me. He finally said, breaking the ice. And then he looked in my eyes. So, what's your verdict, Matorni? I sobbed. You're not guilty. My voice cracked. He smiled. You're right about my mom, Atorni. She stabbed my dad. But at the same time, you're wrong. She didn't kill him. Because Courtney, I did. Confused, I looked at him. Dumb detectives, dumb police, and dumb law. They think he really died because of that? What do you mean? I asked, baffled. My dad didn't die because of the knife. Trace answered. It was poison, Courtney. I poisoned him. A silence. I couldn't open my mouth. I couldn't think of anything to say since my mind couldn't absorb anything. He looked down, smiling at me. Courtney, your verdict is wrong all along. And he looked at me. He smirked. <laughs> I'm guilty. Chapter 5. What happened on Saturday night? Saturday night. Sir, out the poco. A tall teenage man could be seen in the counter, smiling. The manager smiled back. Bakit kasi pumasok ka pa? Day off mo, di ba? Wala pong magawa sa bahay. He said, grinning. Okay na rin po siguro. Extra income. Una na po ako, ha? Sige, ingat ka. Kayo mag-iingat dito, he said, looking at his co-employee. Ano na naman yun, Trace? The guy said, laughing. Ikaw ang mag-ingat. Dumarami na ang customer dahil sa'yo. He laughed. Baliw! With a smile on his face, he went out of the store where he worked as a part-timer. He looked at the sky. It was cloudy, as if the rain would soon pour hard. He shrugged. He was walking, observing things around him when 
His phone beeped. He took it out of his pockets, and as soon as he saw who texted him, the text was from his professor, whom he called Snorlax. She was asking when he would go back to school. I miss you, darling. When will you go back? He cringed. Related messages were from his blockmates and schoolmates, whom he didn't even know. His popularity in school was insane. Yet, he didn't care. He only had eyes for one person. Seven billion people. Yet, he got his eyes fixated at only one girl he couldn't afford to lose. He scanned his phone and frowned when he found no message from her. Tingnan mo tong taong to. Ang sama ng ugali. He mumbled. Di man lang ako kamustahin. Ang tagal na namin di nagkikita. Wala man lang text. Wala man lang kahit ano. Frowning still, he slid his phone back to his pocket. And soon enough, he took it out again. Ah, di ako mapakali. He murmured to himself. Kita tayo, punta ako sa inyo mamaya. After sending it to the only woman he was interested with, he turned his phone off again. He didn't want to receive alibis such as she's busy, she's doing something, or what. He missed her, and nothing could satiate it aside from her presence. Minutes later, he found himself opening their gate, and as soon as he went inside, he smelled something, as if someone was cooking in the kitchen. Nakauwi na si Mama? He asked himself, confused. His mom worked as a housemaid in a nearby city and only went home every three days or every weekend. It was fine with him so that she wouldn't be beaten up by his dad because giving him and his mom bruises was his dad's most favorite hobby. He went to the kitchen excitedly and was rendered utterly speechless when he saw who it was. It was his dad. His dad would usually lie down all day, doing nothing at all. His dad would usually go home drunk, would ask for money, and would be violent and abusive. Was in the kitchen, cooking, and even humming. Oh, how we gonna? He asked, smiling. In time, mo na to. Sabay na tayong kumain. Pagod ka ba? He couldn't open his mouth. He was thoroughly shaken. Kumain na po ako sa store. He said. His voice cracked. His dad looked at him. Ah, ganun ba? Gusto sana kitang makasalo. He felt tears forming in his eyes. Mamaya na lang po siguro. Pagdating ni mama. His dad smiled. Mas maganda nga yun. Mas maganda nga yun. Initin ko na lang uli ito. Sige po. He turned his back, mixed emotions in his chest. He was about to walk, but then he got petrified when his dad called him by his name. He got often called Inutil. Walang silbe. Salot. Walang kwenta. But this time, he got called by his name. And for him, that felt so good. He almost burst out crying. Po? Po? He asked, his voice cracking. He didn't even turn to him. Ay nga ka, ha? He walked faster and went to his room with tears on his cheeks. What? Was that? Had his dad changed? Realizing all the abuses he committed, a mixture of anger and hope rose inside him. He cried and later fell asleep. It was then in the evening when he woke up. Confused on what planet he was on, he checked his phone. He smiled as soon as he saw the message he got. There were still messages from his schoolmates, but this time, most of it came from someone he'd been waiting. She kept asking, What time? Anong pag-uusapan? Anong meron? Busy siya? Matutulog siya? 
and so on. Smiling, he replied, Malalaman mo mamaya. Hindi mo ba ako namimiss? Soon enough, he got a reply. Yuck! He laughed because he could hear her voice and could actually imagine her face. Basta mamaya, may ikikwento rin ako. He turned his phone off again and stared. I stared pala to. Kala ko started. Okay. Let me repeat that. In three, two, one. He turned his phone off again and stared at the ceiling of his room, thinking of his dad. Maybe people really did change. Until he heard a noise, a laughing noise. It came from the room beside his. Yes, yes, a man said. Few days will do. He recognized it as his dad. Wait for me, just a few more days, okay? His dad said, losing his temper. I just have to poison that useless bitch. Beat. His eyes grew bigger. Napakalaki pala ng pera niyan sa insurance. Her dead parents left her box of money, yet she didn't tell me. What the hell? Oh, oh. My child? He asked. I didn't think of that. Kung siya ang beneficiary, a little acting will do. Paniwalang paniwala naman na ang loko. At hindi mo kang pera yun. Baka nga ilipat pa niya sa akin yun. One step at a time. The bitch has to die first and we can be together. Sige na. Nasa iba ba na yun? Kanina pa naghihintay. Few seconds later, he heard footsteps. Disturbed by the things he heard. His dad is just acting out and wants to kill his mom. He hurriedly went down and what he saw caused a bang in his chest. There was a violet flower on the stairs. He picked it up. Normal people would think it was just a flower. But as a biology major, he knew it was not. His eyes grew wider when he recognized what it was. An aconite. A really poisonous flower that when digested could hardly be detected and may cause paralysis or carjack arrest to the victim. With his heart pounding, he went to the kitchen and his mom was there. Looking so joyful, smiling so genuinely, she greeted him, but he didn't smile. Where's dad? He asked, tears in his eyes. Nasa CR, she said. Kumusta ang anak ko? Di mo ba na-miss si mama? Anong meron sa daddy mo ngayon? Ang maalaga. His tears fell. His mom had this smile he never saw before. A genuine smile. A smile of love. A smile from someone who seemed like She hadn't endured any pain in her life. She had been assaulted and abused, yet she never left his dad. She only wanted him to treat them right, and now he did. With a plot twist of killing her. Have you eaten? His voice cracked. His mom smiled. Hindi pa. Sabay-sabay na tayo. He closed his eyes. He could endure everything, but seeing his mom being abused this much, he couldn't take it. He'd had enough. Ma, he said, can you cook me an egg? The usual one you make for me. I missed it. His mom smiled. You missed me that much? Okay. His mom stood up, and when she started cooking, he looked at the food. There was plenty of food on the table until he saw the pinak bit. He closed his eyes hard. He was barely crying. Minutes later, he saw himself dining with them. His mom kept on giggling because of his dad's romantic acts. Suddenly, he felt himself being brought back to the days when They weren't as chaotic as this. 
How's my cooking? His dad asked. Great. Parang dati lang. His mom said, smiling from ear to ear. He shook his head, smiling bitterly. Anak, kamusta ang lasa? Tanong ng ama niya. He smirked. I think I have to ask you that question. And he looked at his dad sharply. How does it taste? It's good because I cooked it. His dad answered laughing. But he didn't avert his eyes from him. He smirked bitterly. Oh? He said. So that's how your poison tastes? His dad stopped eating. His mom left dumbstruck. He looked at his dad. Masarap ba? What are you saying? His dad asked. What? What? The poison will occur minutes from now. It will shut your respiratory down and will make you either paralyzed or dead. You're dead caused by carjack arrest. He said sternly, tears once again forming in his eyes, anger in his cold yet calm voice. What are you saying? His mom, now confused. M ma his voice cracked, tears now flowing. Dad tried to poison you for your insurance. He looked at his dad, anger in his eyes. And to join his mistress after. He placed on the table the flower he saw. It's an aconite. Dad tried poisoning you with it. I heard him say he only wanted to kill you, and not me. So, he cooked pinakbet. He knows it gives me allergy, so surely I won't eat it. He looked at his mom. But you, mom, you will. Then he smirked. Pero, pinagpalit ko ang pagkain niyo. He said, and he looked at his dad. You ate your own poison. How does it taste? His dad turned red. His mom cried, panicking. Ano ba sinasabi mo? Bawiin mo yung sinasabi mo! Ma, can't you see it? He exclaimed. He tried to poison you. He tried to kill you because he thought... He thought... He thought... Because you're useless. Finally, his dad showed off his true color. Kasi wala kayong kwenta. Mga inutil! In a matter of seconds, he saw his dad attacking his mom. She received really loud and hard slaps. He rescued her, and in return, he was beaten up. He tried to punch his dad, but he missed. His right hand hit the floor instead, and he felt like it got fractured. He moaned in pain. His dad saw the opportunity, and he beat him to a pulp. Punches on the face, on the stomach, on his body. He became numb from it. Until a loud scream was heard. His dad looked back and in his surprise, a knife was suddenly plunged into his chest. He was stabbed once, twice, thrice, with the last one being the most forceful. With blood flowing like a river from his chest, he fell to the floor, with the knife still stuck on him, hopelessly. Then he saw his mom crying, with blood on her gloves. Ma. Traumatized by that gory, bloody incident, his mom fainted and fell. With the remaining strength in him, he stood up with his injured right hand. He walked towards his dad and in the blink of an eye, using his left hand, which still hurt because of a last year's fracture, he lifted the knife from his dad's chest. That was when the door opened and in his horror, it was his aunt. Seeing his mom unconscious and his dad lying on the floor with a stab wound on his chest and the knife 
in his hand. In no time, he saw himself running away. No, he had no intention of running away. He just had to make things clear. He needed strength before finally surrendering himself. While on the run, he texted Courtney. Nasa kanto ako. Then he saw her coming out of the gate. They talked, and he kept on looking at her while they talked. He was gaining strength by her mere presence. Until he confessed. He initially wanted to confess tonight and asked for her heart. He had always been so in love with her, but was just afraid of ruining their friendship. However, after reading accidentally an entry in her diary, which said she loved him as well, hope rose inside him. But this time, it's different. He confessed not to ask for her heart, but to let her go and say goodbye. Why does fate have to be this cruel to us? He thought. He walked away, leaving her still standing there, with tears flowing from her eyes. He wanted to be selfish and hug her and just run away with her. But with the filth in his hands, he couldn't afford to drag her into his mess. She's too precious for that, he thought. Until he heard loud noises and suddenly, he was surrounded by police cars. He was caught, yet he smiled. He had nothing to fear. He saved his mom. He fulfilled his promise to see her. He confessed his love. He was being handcuffed when he saw her coming to him. Their eyes met and she was crying. With pain inside him and his life now going nowhere, he smiled and he mounted. I love you.